Uh, so this week, it's been a mix, right? Because we had the hurricane. Introduce yourself. Oh, gosh, yes. So <laughs> my bad. We're really bad at that. I know. Well, because everybody in the room knows who we are, right? Yeah, but everybody in the podcast land is not, maybe. Really? Yeah. I know. It's a valid point. <laughs> you know. <laughs> My brain is not there. Everyone the will know. Are, the microphones are here, but they're not like in my brain. It's yeah. time. Yeah. You know, we're just having a conversation like we all just picked up, you know. We're, yeah. we Which we do, do on a daily basis. Yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So I'm Kristen. I'm Angela. And I'm Kathy. And today we have... I'm Laura. Lolo. Lolo. We, like Lolo. Lolo. <laughs> Lolo. we love our Lolo. Lolo. And we have Lolo on today to talk about comedy. Costuming Yay. and wigs and all that kind of fun stuff. But before we get into that, yes. guys, how was your week this week? Uh, it was like a mixed bag, right? Didn't we have a hurricane this week? We did. That's right. Ish. Yeah. Oh my God, it feels so Can you call ago. it a hurricane? I know. It, was Tropical it last storm. week? It was this week, It was right? this week. It, yeah, it was Thursday. Yeah. It, it was, was Nicole. It was a wind event. <laughs> it was Nicole. Yeah. <laughs> it was a wind event. Yeah. It was. I'm not sure we needed school off that day. I'm not complaining. No. As a teacher... <laughs> I am not complaining that we had those days, that day off. Yes. I'm more worried that we may, like, now we yeah. may be eating into Thanksgiving's mm -hmm. break. I doubt it, but. Yeah, I'm hoping. I've been teaching 16 years, and we've never had to. Mm. My mom taught 42 years, and one time did they. And it was the year that they had the four hurricanes that hit oh, in 2004. Oh, special oh okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So. Yes, I was glad we had it because I was sick in bed all day. So mm -hmm. it was a good day for that. Mm -hmm. It was a different type of hurricane coming <laughs> through your house. <laughs> I Ooh, know. It's yeah. gone like through one to the other. Ooh. Yeah. It's going around. The it's creep not and COVID. Crud. It's not flu. Mm -mm. It's not strep. Yeah, it's, it's just, just the funk. It's Nasty going through my virus. classroom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have been like Zycam nasal swabbing like crazy around <laughs> okay, here. I've tried that. And I don't know. I Mm. It works. It did not work for Lolo uh, because no. I've tried it several <laughs> we times. Have our first naysayer on because the Because Kristen's over here going, "Do it, Lolo, do it." Okay, and I have. It works. And it works. No, nothing. I Maybe still you get didn't sick. Do it right. Well, that's just crap. <laughs> you have to do it. it doesn't two go in your ear. Each nose. What? Do it in my, my ear. Goodness. User error, people. User error. Which is highly <laughs> likely because I I do have user error all the time. But no, I did it twice in each nostril. You got oh. it like repeatedly. I yes. I did it over and over again. Maybe it was like, like a three times. Time. Were you that aggressive with it? I was very <laughs> aggressive with it. It's a good thing this is recorded <laughs> visually. <laughs> I, I did very aggressively. It was not fun. It was like taking a COVID test. Well, you might have been sticking it in there too far. I could have been. Like yeah, I don't know. Uh, on the, it's just at the, the tip. Rim. <laughs> the I don't know. <laughs> you know, listen. That's a whole nother conversation, ladies. <laughs> Hold on, conversation. Hold on, I've got to have some more water. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> well, I, I oh, made the kids goodness. do it. You know, Michaela's mm -hmm. autistic, so she is, you know, hypersensitive yeah. to stuff. And uh, the first time I made her do it, it was okay. But then the next time she's like, well, how long do I have to sit with this on my nose like a snotty child? <laughs> that was like, because that's kind of what it is, yeah. right? Like, I mean, not she's not wrong. Or anything. Oh and I, God, and so it's I gross. totally empathize with her on that oh, one because yeah. it feels the same way to me. And I'm just like, I'm fighting every fiber mm -hmm. of my being to like not wipe it, yes. you know? Mm -hmm. Yes. But um, I make her and, and Pinky, well, because we had uh, districts mm -hmm. this week, mm -hmm. um, Pinky has been Zycam in like every day, twice a day. Why didn't LK do that? She did. Oh, whoops. She did work for 10 didn't days. Work. Well, she's got a whole different immune <laughs> I'm problem. I'm just saying. So. <laughs> See, I'm just saying. Look. She's not the norm. <laughs> she is she is not. She's the exception. She's not the norm. She's no. special in many so, ways. Yeah. Aww, really the Zycam cool. works. Um because <laughs> mm -mm. we made it to so. districts yesterday. Yeah, we made Yay! it there. And then Pinky yeah. woke up this morning and goes, My throat's a little sore. And I was like, Well, you sang all day yesterday. So we're yeah. just gonna go with that. Goes I came yeah. again. Mm -hmm. Hey, Explain exactly what districts are, because people listening might not know yeah, what that's all about. We had um, Junior Thespian District Festival. So all the junior thespians in Polk County came together, middle school, came together to compete in lots of different um, events, like our kids did solo musical theater, and they also did small, small group. group. They and have so that, many yeah. like mm -hmm. different categories, though, that I, I just didn't expect. So like our first year, last year... There was somebody that did um, like scenic design. Mm -hmm. Nice. That Costumes. was pretty cool. <clears throat> yeah. Um, this year, what did she do? Um, Script writing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it was really. And they it, got like all kinds of feedback on it. It was really neat. Yeah, to watch. the feedback I think is the most yeah. important most of the time. Definitely. I mean, yeah. yes, getting your superiors and your things like that are awesome and wonderful and a great confidence boost. But I think the feedback is what's the most important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's good when the judges take the time to actually yes. leave like good feedback. Yes. Um, even if they're a hard judge, which yes. like you know, Pinky was. She had one of those kind of t- mm-hmm. more difficult judges, but yeah. that judge left a lot of very valuable mm-hmm. feedback. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's a little subjective yeah. because she would say, you know, um, your your character wasn't fully developed and, you know, your blocking was not great. And then the next guy goes, your character was awesome. I yes. loved how developed they were and, <laughs> and how you're so sweet, subjective. How you, yeah. yeah. <laughs> how you moved across and the blocking was fantastic. And, and you're, you're like, like, what the hell? <laughs> Yeah, which is, Excuse so what me. do I do with that? Yeah. You know, that's not... Meet in the middle. <laughs> I guess. I don't know how that, yeah. But, um, it's but nice it's not to get that, though, like because that. if you get a superior, which our girls got superiors, which woo, is... Woo, woo, woo. Yeah. yeah! They um, get to go to states and compete again. That's so so you can take that feedback that you got and tweak your performance and hopefully yeah. we'll which do is, well. too, like the solo, mm-hmm. I don't... Um, so Pinky this year will be auditioning for the local, um, like... I arts high school and um she's actually going to be taking the same song that she sang at districts and mm-hmm. now um at state she will also be using that to sing for Harrison so all of that feedback that she mm-hmm. got from those judges would be applied oh, yeah. just in time oh, for Harrison great. just in time yeah, yeah. well perfect. and they're used to hearing it from their vocal coach or their director at their community theater or their whatever they're doing so to have somebody on the outside yeah come in who do not know them and do not know anything like their work ethic or how long they've worked on it is I think a really mm-hmm. great thing for them to do because they're like oh so that's what my vocal coach meant I yes. you know yeah nice maybe I should have done that you know if it's the same note or not saying that your girls do that, but like for other kiddos. Yeah, no, that's the truth. Because they get, you know, there's that level of comfort. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And so that relationship mm-hmm. is a little bit different mm-hmm. than having somebody yeah. with brand new eyes. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Coming in yeah, it's really saying, nice hey. to get that feedback. And we noticed too, we're so fortunate that our kids can have private lessons. Yeah. Because there were a ton of talented kids there, mm-hmm. but you could tell the ones that had had mm-hmm. training and mm-hmm. ones that were just a part of a group at the school. So if you're able to get your kids into oh, that kind yeah. of training, it's very beneficial. Oh, yeah. Dance, voice, mm-hmm. all the above. Well, it's kind of funny because, you know, I, I, we're so heavily involved in mm-hmm. all of this stuff, theater in this area. But, you know, I was like doing blood work a couple months back and the lady's like um, asking me, you know, what are we doing? And I'm like, oh, well, we're about to go into whatever show it was at the time. I don't even remember. And... um I, she's like, oh, my daughter auditioned for that and didn't get in. And I was like, oh, oops, a doodles. Yeah, pretty much. Um, was she's like, before or after she right. used the needle? I'm just <laughs> watching. <laughs> <laughs> so like, <Ooh. laughs> so then, but then the question comes, the one that every parent wants to know, which yeah. is like, mm-hmm. how do I help my kid get past that mm-hmm. barrier of casting, mm-hmm. right? Like, how do I get them in or whatever? And, mm-hmm. um, my tip to her was get involved. Like, yeah. put your kid in the classes that mm-hmm. happen at the local yeah. community theater. Start getting them some training. If they want to sing and that's, like, their big thing, like, mm-hmm. get them a vocal coach. Like, even if you're not doing the rest of it, like, get them that. Yeah. Get them some help. Yep. You got to find... I mean, even, um, you know, growing up a band nerd, I had multiple instructors yes. that were there that, you know, just private tutelage, basically, mm-hmm to help me with all of that stuff. And even when I went to college, that was actually a requirement of my scholarship when I was going for music for performance. Um, and I had to have, so I went up there for saxophone and clarinet and I had to have a tutor for both. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh yeah. So it was a lot. Like, I think I did music like four hours, five hours a day, every day. Oh yeah. You know, it's a commitment. That's for sure. It is, but I mean, it is in this vein too. Like, you know, so if you're a parent out there and you're struggling to figure out how, like start with that, go find somebody to do some Mm -hmm. voice lessons. If your kid loves to dance, go get them and dance. 
Well, there's plenty of online options now. You can Zoom. That's right very in true. The comfort of your own the world. Home. Is yeah. yeah, thanks to COVID, yeah. like everybody feels comfortable. The with one that thing now. that came out of COVID, right? Yeah, the Zoom, <laughs> the Zoom lesson. The one good the thing Zoom. you mean? The one good thing. Yes, yeah. the one good thing. Yes. There's plenty of things that there's came out of COVID. There's a lot of things that came out, but yes, the one good thing. <laughs> and, uh, let's yes. see, Zooming and uh, Zycam. Just gonna no, <laughs> Zycam. I'm telling you, don't listen to them. Does not work for Lolo or LK. Oh, no, it does not. Maybe it's just an L thing. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so don't know. when are states then? January. Okay. Mm-hmm. And when are the where are they held? Oh, Orlando Convention Center. Yeah, yes. this year. Okay. I don't know that it's always there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But Makes yeah, sense. this year. I think venue. that the girls to aunties handlers need to go. Yes, definitely. I'm so, just throwing that out there. Parvati has already told me <laughs> that um, she needs extra chaperones. Nice. Good. Good. Yes, yeah. Pinky. Yes. And I was like, okay, so, so Lolo and Jojo, it's, it's up to you to ask your teacher <laughs> how many chaperones you're allowed to bring. I think if you pay, yeah. it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm suspecting. Yeah. But yeah, so Lolo and Jojo, but yep. it's like two days. Mm-hmm. See, like districts was just it's, one mm-hmm. day. They half of that day was well, a little more than half of that day, I guess maybe was um, them actually doing their performances mm-hmm. and stuff. And then the other half of the day, which we didn't stay for this year was um they do like classes and stuff yeah 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 and then and then at the end of the night they have like their little awards ceremony yeah. type shindig with mm-hmm. you know they have like dinner and then you go party and dance the kids dance they screamed a lot last year and i was yeah a little no, thank you. i was a little yeah no thank you for me <laughs> that's a hard pass yeah. <laughs> we might be able to do some videoing from there i what hope so yeah, yeah we could do it jama mama's on location uh yeah <laughs> that we might Maybe, be able to make yeah. That I mean, we should see if our producer can make that happen. Like, yeah, yeah. let's check. Kristen, I'm, I think you have an in with him. Uh, <laughs> do I? <laughs> depends on the day. Yeah. Yeah. It does depend on the day. <laughs> if he wants to be a certain puppet, <laughs> I'm just throwing that out there. Bumble has anything. Well, the cool thing about um, states, too, is the workshops are absolutely amazing. Like, yeah. We went to one guy last year who is a costumer for Wicked. And he talked all See, about... See, this is why Lolo needs to go. Yeah, it was really, really yes. interesting. And one guy is a professional makeup artist for theater and just some Aww, really neat that's workshops. Amazing. That's so that really was, cool. That when Lolo in January? Oh, listen, Lolo. It's busy. the Martin Luther King weekend. Uh, yeah, you have a show, don't you? Yeah, I do. Uh, You're going to be pretty bad. occupado. I mean, your show's going to be a fun show, so... It's, it's going it's to be a okay a, trade. It will be a fun show, but... <laughs> hmm. No, I'll be there. I'll be... So we'll take one auntie, but not the other? <sighs> Fine. It's a weekend. Do you guys do rehearsals on weekends? We do. We do okay. five days a week. So oh, we wow. do Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and then possibly a Saturday morning and, it's, and or a Sunday afternoon. Well, play by year, right? Okay. Look at the yeah. calendar. You yeah. might be able to scoot out there mm-hmm. for part of the day. Do we know the dates yet? Mm-hmm. 12th, First date? 12th through 14th. Okay. So it's 12 and 13 are the um, workshop days, and the 14th is the competition day. Okay. So I know that, that this show that you're about to do mm-hmm. is, uh, that schedule might be already set. It is set. So a little bit different than how um, yes. some this, of our other shows have gone. We set this schedule back in August. Okay. Um, because of but the nature be of the show. Um, <laughs> <Maybe>. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. We start in January. Um, the bulk of the rehearsals start in January. And then we open the middle of February. And because of the nature of the show, it's um, musically heavy. And okay. so, you know, we're getting right up to bat with rehearsals and starting and mm. things like that and being the stage manager I gotta be there every day yeah which is fun yeah you're which, gonna have a great time I'm very excited you running your own board yes as of right now so this will be it's in a, their new black box and um, they just showed me where the stage manager booth is it's upstairs above the black box and which is really cool i'm really excited but i'm not sure if the board will be up there or if the board will be continue to be downstairs where the sound is okay the they know that i prefer to run my own light board especially with this show because it's completely sung through yeah and i prefer to run my own board because i can keep the beat better with myself and i feel like there might be a little bit of delay when i call 
And it's also a control thing. <laughs> I like to have control. What? You have control issues? And I sh- yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I like that and control. And if there is a mess up, it's my fault and nobody else's fault. And um, and I can quickly hit the back button or do whatever. So, Give a quick explanation of what the board is. The board is the light board. So it is um, what it sounds like. It is a big old board that has tons of buttons and sliders and stuff on there that controls all the lights that go on stage, um, the, the spots, the specials, any of that thing. It's what our lighting designer sits at and programs in, and then he sets it all in, and either your stage manager runs the board, uh, meaning that you hit the go button to make all the lights go, Mm-hmm. Um, or but the, it like walks through the each step. You just hit the button to advance, basically. Yes. So you, there's the go button means it's moving to the next queue. So you obviously start at queue one, and that's usually like a pre-show where it um, the house lights are up. The um, sometimes there's a show go on the grand. The grand being the curtain um, that separates the stage from the audience, and a show go is um, a light that goes over uh, as um, not a light it's a it looks like a stencil kind of Mm -hmm. that goes over the light itself Mm -hmm. and it projects the um, show the title of the show we had in in another show we just did this summer and a bunch of things like that onto the grand and then you go to the next one and then you just keep going but if for some reason you've skipped ahead because sometimes your finger can get a little trigger happy mm-hmm. or people are talking in your ear and you're like shut up i just missed you know a yeah. cue or whatever you can hit the go the back button you can stop that current cue that's loading in and then go backwards so that you're out of that cue. i've and had to do too. plenty of that yeah me too i've had to do that it happens like, it's no, human no no go back <laughs> In the meantime, the deck crew is like, discovered on stage. Yes, <laughs> yes. I don't think lights. I've ever caught a deck crew member in my oh, experience. You have caused other deck crew members <laughs> to be caught. I have? Yeah. Moana, when the fly went up. And Listen. <laughs> Listen. Listen. Uh-oh. That show. <laughs> Listen. Yes, I did do that. <laughs> I don't remember... Oh, it was, yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Listen, it was not my fault. It probably was my fault, but we're going to move past that. That's right. <laughs> it you happens. live and you learn when you call a show from backstage. <laughs> so you're <laughs> stage fun. managing this show, but a lot of times when you're not stage yes. managing, you are all about the cost. Yes. So That's we want to You, hear you do more that. of that than the other, right? Now like, I do. Okay. When I first started 10 years ago, 10 years ago at, at here, um, I stage managed all the time. Um, but we didn't have a set costumer. Um, we had a couple different ones. Um, now we have a set costumer that basically does the costumes for every show um, for us. But I stage managed all the time. But then, you know, you get, it becomes a lot. And my day job is teaching. And so I... Not just teaching, but teaching. Oh, I teach children, um, preschoolers with special needs. Um, so mm-hmm. I have a wonderful special group of little kids, and so that is my day job, and I've been doing that for 16 years. I don't know how you have energy after no. that day job to, um, then, to, to then give to theater at any capacity, to I be know. honest with you, because... I know. In the beginning, I had a lot more. I was a little, I was younger. <laughs> I was in my early 20s. Well, that's life, I mean. Yeah. And yeah. now well, I'm yeah. not in the beginning, life. I had a lot more, too. <laughs> I did. You know, life just, you know, holds those over. Now. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But now I'm like, I get through the day with wine and <laughs> coffee. Lots of coffee. Chocolate. See, I don't drink chocolate. coffee. <laughs> oh, chocolate, That's my yes. too. Chocolate and peanut butter mixed together. Ooh. That's my favorite. Peanut butter whiskey. They have some <gasps> peanut, butter whiskey. peanut butter chips in that bowl over there. Holy oh. smokes. Yeah, that might have to make its way over here. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> but, um, so, mm. if I can, <laughs> naps are nice <laughs> in yeah. between the work day and theater life in the evening but it doesn't always work that way um if I don't have that's why having Thursday off was nice because of the hurricane I was a lazy teacher and did absolutely nothing (laughs) perfect I literally stayed in my pajamas and laid in bed and watched stupid television (laughs) which was awesome yeah so so especially this week when I was stage managing two shows at one time 
because one show was in rehearsals and one show it was in auditions. Yeah. So and at two different theaters. Well, and you had a lot of because this show is kind of a, the one you're about to start doing mm-hmm. in January. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a big that's a big name that it show. Is. So you had a lot of auditions. And it was a lot of fun. <laughs> a lot of very talented, people very talented. Audition. Yeah, people hard audition. decision. I'm it sure. Was, it was a lot of fun, and it's going to be a lot of fun. And then currently. No. With a with a <laughs> kid show <laughs> right now. Nice try, Kathy. So <laughs> I missed it. I was not paying attention to Kathy. But okay. She goes, Can we talk about that? And I said, No. <laughs> no. We're Cannot. talking about costumes. Yeah. We're talking about costumes. We're so anyway, anyway. focus. So I focus, focus. We want to talk about that There's show so much we know when about we get to right. January. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Um, How did you get into musical theater? Because you so were a dancer to I, I was a dancer, with. yep. So I grew up in the dance world. Um, my first live, live performance experience was when I was three. Oh, um, my I'd mom, like to see those pictures. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm sure my mom has them. Um, my first live experience was the Nutcracker at three years old. My mom oh my took gosh. me and Aww. her best friend and her little girl um, to the Nutcracker at our here in the Civic Center. And if you, you three, because you know me, can imagine me, but just little. Yeah. Exactly <laughs> how I was. Your poor mother. Yeah, my poor mother is correct. She's um, but she's just like I am. So it's, you know, twofold. But I, you know, very talkative and very rambunctious and very, you know, mm-hmm. like, here I am. Um, and the Nutcracker is very long. And my mom was like, oh, I don't know if she's going to make through the, make it through this whole thing. But my mom said I sat on the edge of my seat the entire, like, what, three hours that it was. Oh. I did not move. I did not make a sound. My mouth was open and my eyes were wide the entire three hours. I did not make a peep. And she said she looked over at me and went, well, I think I just found yeah. her thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I started dance probably the next August, probably. So that was December and I was three the next August. And I that was what I loved to do. And I danced all the way until I was 20, 25, 26. Um, and I taught dance. So when I got into high school, I started teaching dance at the, at the dance studio that I grew up at. Um, but I also played soccer too, so I was one of those that like went to the soccer field, went to the ballet theater and mm-hmm. ballet studio, and back and forth. Um, that only lasted a couple of seasons. My mom was like, "Listen, <laughs> you've got to choose," and I was like, mm, "Okay." So, um, and I actually stopped dancing for a couple of years because I wanted to play soccer, mm-hmm. and but then I broke my knee and went, "No, I'm good," and went back to the dance. <laughs> uh, so it's the life. same trick knee now. Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. Soccer. It's the soccer. It's soccer's fault. <laughs> It well, is. the right one is. The left one is theater fault. <laughs> but the right one is soccer's fault. Oh, see, uh, I didn't realize you had two trick knees. I do. The right one is soccer. The left one is theater. Um, but yes. But anyway, so I did that, and I started working at the dance studio. Um, and then I also grew up in choir, so I was a singer. Um, I did it in elementary school and all the way through middle school. And I was in show choir in high school, and we traveled and toured. And, and I choreographed our dances and show choir and stuff. And I did a couple of musicals in middle school, um, but I've always been a lover of musicals, but it wasn't until I was in college that I really was like, I love musicals, show tunes. <laughs> um, and I just, I've always been. I had friends that grew up at the theater and gone and seen their shows. Um, my first um, like community theater production that I saw was Annie, and my friend was an orphan. And so I went and saw her and went and saw all those different things. But it wasn't until I was in college and or that I met a friend of mine who um, eventually started working um, at our community theater. And then they wanted to start a program for special needs. And um, she's like, oh, I have a friend that that's what she does. And she's in the theater. So she called me and I helped them do that and then she's like oh you'd be a great stage manager and I was like okay but I knew what stage managers did but not really not really what they did yeah. um and I took a workshop and here we are 10 years later wow. <laughs> wow. so somewhere kind along of, that journey yeah you ended up in the costume side so yeah so in happen? the dance world um you have to quick change a lot and you have okay. to do a lot. You have to underdress your tights and everything like that. 
and in the dance world and it usually just happens it literally happens right off in the wings like you leave that you leave the stage and you are stripping down to your next costume because sometimes you have maybe a song a performance um little vignette or whatever it is um and then you go right back into wherever you're going so that's where that started in the quick change world in costumes um but it wasn't really until i started at the at working at the theater that i loved costumes that i i you know i love i loved playing dress up when i was a kid so that probably <laughs> had something to do Shh, not i loved playing dress up as a kid um i loved playing barbies and dressing up my barbies as a kid and so and i've always loved hair doing hair and never was a makeup person so it's funny that i like to do it now um but so those things all of that mixed together kind of helped my me fall in love with costumes um and it really wasn't until i started working with heather who is um a magician a genius she is uh, a yes. genius oh she is gosh. a i'm gonna say it she's a fucking genius she is yeah. yes. she is amazing yes. at what she does oh. the things that come out of her mind and her fingers mm-hmm. how how yeah. did it start like that and now we have this gorgeous dress yeah the vision like how did like you it that? it yeah. This, it's just amazing. So it really wasn't until I started working with her that I was like, oh, I really want to do this all the time. And mm. so, which was probably five years ago, maybe. And the first time I worked with her, I was in a show. She was costuming me. And we just clicked and became really good friends. And, and But I had done worked, you know, been a quick changer and things like that before then. But... Mm-hmm. So it's kind of a combination of everything. You know, it's kind of interesting, the quick change aspect of that. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think until you're back there mm-hmm. that you understand, you know, you're, uh, oh. I mean, you wear stuff underneath your costumes. Mm-hmm. So like, you know, yeah, you're still modest yes. enough, yeah. but you really kind of have to be comfortable mm-hmm. doing oh, yeah. stripping down. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, oh, if you hands. think your kids aren't getting exposed, like they kind of are mm-hmm. back there to that kind well, of we, stuff a little bit they are but especially in a kid's yeah. show we always and i think it's even like you know nice and in a, in a, in with adu- adults too mm-hmm. um you know wear tights wear leotard well i also think wearing tights is is nice anyways just because in my personal opinion and my preference as an um actor and a dancer um it just helps your the lines of your legs look you know you know cleaner and yeah. That kind of thing. Mm-hmm. It just completes the ensemble. I wore black <laughs> underneath that Beauty and the Beast uh, uh-huh. costume that I had to wear. The mm-hmm. big, I mean, that it's thing like was heavy. It was it very was heavy. Very heavy. <laughs> a beautiful dress. It's Heather gorgeous. likes to use, um, and I will call her out for this, she likes to use um, fabric. Um, um, yes, fabric, but um, upholstery fabric yeah. sometimes. Like yeah, that stuff. And I look at her and go, well, oh, I'm not wearing it's it. Hard to, <laughs> hard Sorry, to sew guys. through, but yeah. yeah. Like wearing a couch. But I wore, <laughs> um, <laughs> I wore workout <laughs> pants <music>. underneath that. <laughs> well, yeah. So, I just come to the theater and that, I just didn't take them off. Well, and that's so. the thing. So sometimes if, um, if I have a, if I have a long skirt on or something and that's all that I'm wearing or pants, I'm not wearing tights. Or if I am, I'm just going to wear like knee highs. Yeah, they were like capris. Um, So I could lift because I had to like, yeah, I had to lift those skirts to go Mm -hmm. up the set and then run down the set when we're scared, you know? (laughs) Who the beast? Yeah. Like everybody's coming to life and, Uh, you know, we're there to kill the beast, I guess. I, you know, (laughs) I never got, I never saw the beast, you know, in my scene there. But was too busy changing his makeup. But yeah, like Lumiere scared me and I had to like go down. And I was like, so careful going down the stairs and like lifting the skirts. So I wanted to make sure like you wouldn't see my pants. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> like the yeah. girls say, safety shorts. They safety still call shorts them safety is very shorts. good. Yeah. I always yes. have safety shorts on too. But yeah. So, but always wearing, especially in a children's show, a leotard. And, mm-hmm. a, you know, usually a, you know, a skin tone leotard. Right. Um, mm-hmm. And tights and or safety shorts. It's always nice because you're back there. You know, our dressing rooms are only so big. And most of the time, you know, shows are, casts are a little bit bigger than the dressing room. And we have to use auxiliary dressing rooms. And, you know, people are in and out and, you know, changing and things like that. And sometimes you have to change backstage. Mm-hmm. You don't have time to go back to the dressing room. Right. So Doing having that extra layer of modesty helps, um, you know, especially in a kid's show. Um, and then you get to adults and adults are adults. So you do what you want to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, but yeah. So with those quick changes, what are some tricks that you use to help 
Um, those go smoothly because we've yeah. had it not go smoothly. When you need like smoothly. eight arms and we just don't have those. So, um, well, first with the quick changes, you have to decide if it's actually a true quick change or if you have a little bit more time. Mm. So, I so sometimes people will go, oh my gosh, I only have a minute to change. Well, honey, a minute's like five or ten minutes. It's it's to <laughs> yeah. me in, in in the quick change world. Um, I consider a quick change anything that's probably about 45 seconds, 30 seconds or less um, for me, um, just because I feel like, you know, a minute, okay, we've got some time to breathe. We've got a little, you know, we have some time for a flub. Um, it doesn't feel, always feel that way in the moment, um, but but yeah, so first you have to decide if it's, if it's a true quick change. Then you are like, okay, well, that has to happen outside. Then you have to talk with your costumer and say, um, okay, well, this is not going to work here after you've done it like first dress and what usually happens is Heather and I have already decided it's a quick change or whatever costume I'm working with and we'll go okay so we try to be preemptive with it like we know all the layers that have to go on and all the layers that have to come off so what's going to make it easier so sometimes we put velcro if it's a button down shirt we put velcro on that shirt where the buttons still stick out and it still looks like it's you know you actually buttoned it but you can just rip it off or you put magnets in a jacket to help it stay closed Mm -hmm. or you use snap tape um funny story about a snap tape explain what snap tape is first so snap tape is um it's literally what it sounds like it is a long piece of fabric that's um that has snaps all the way down it so it's like those track suits that athletic athletes wear and they just go rip it off rip it off when they're about to go on their warm-up suits, they have snaps all the way down. And okay. sometimes they're sewn in individually. Uh, otherwise, we have what we call snap tape, and it's on one big roll. kind of looks like ribbon. It's not, you know, the fabric's a little bit tougher than ribbon, but it, it's just you don't have to do each snap individually. You just right. sew the entire thing down, and then you snap it all together. So funny story about snap tapes, because, you know, story time with Lolo is always fun. Yes, it is. Um, <laughs> I was doing a show. My favorite. <laughs> I was doing a show, and... Um, the guy had a, it was, it was the lead guy and I was his dresser and he, he started the show and like these really pretty linen, like shirt and, you know, pants. And then he had to go really fast into his next costume because it was like a flashback. So the beginning was like, here we are present day. Now we're going to remember and we're going flashback to like, you know, way back when. And, um, but he couldn't take his boots off. Because he had severely sprained his ankle first dress. So we had to figure out a way to get these pants Mm. off quickly and safely without taking his boots off. Because once we wrapped his ankle and got that boot on, they were not coming off because he was stable and could move. So I'm trying to think and I'm trying to think and I'm trying to think. And I'm like, I wake up at like 2 in the morning and I scream, stripper pants! (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and I and the only thing I could think of was stripper pants snap tape I couldn't think of snap tape but I could think of stripper pants <laughs> and so I get to the theater the next day and I go to our costumer um, and I go so we need because I couldn't think of I still couldn't think of snap tape um, I said you know and of course I didn't think of athletes either I just think of strippers straight to strippers and <laughs> and I was like you know how strippers they pull their pants off and they go wham and, and they just all fall apart that's what we need and the customer went snap tape and I was like yes <laughs> snap tape that's what it is look so, you know sometimes your brain just doesn't want to give it you that word it doesn't yeah. and it takes a while for me to find things so yes yeah, snap tape is amazing that's aka funny. stripper pants and so we do that a lot too, um, quite a bit. Lately, magnets are really um, good and heavy, and and they like to st- and they stay closed easily. We use those a lot, and then Velcro as well. Um, Is, I don't know if we're allowed to say this trick on the air. The frozen was that magnets? Yeah. Yeah, some of it was, okay. yes. Okay. I mean, I can tell you that. I'll tell yeah, you that Yeah, that was amazing. My favorite part was you with your black hoodie <laughs> wrapped around your, your face. hand out there so you could just grab it. I have Sneaking I, behind oh, Elsa. I think I may have Explain that one. That was amazing. She was <laughs> so, like a little ninja back there. Yeah, I felt like a little hand come out behind. Nobody could see. <laughs> no. no. So um, that might have to be one of my top two like favorite quick changes that I have ever done. And it was in Frozen Junior. And it was the Elsa Let It Go quick change um, from her coronation gown into her infamous let it go you know moment dress that's just beautiful 
So, um, so Heather and I, you know, she talked about it with the director and she had her vision and what she wanted it to look like. And we knew it had to be a quick change and we knew it wasn't one of those that was coming off stage. There wasn't going to be basically a light shift. Like it was happening on stage because mm-hmm. some of those changes happen on stage in front of the audience or behind a set piece. This one was on stage in the middle of the song. And so, and it's iconic because it's, it's frozen. Yeah. Yes. Like every song knows. is building, building, oh, building. And, and then she finally rips. reveals, I am Ooh. done being this person. Now I'm this other person. So, you know, you want to get it right. So we talked about it and we talked through it. And Heather and I went through some things. We're like, well, do I pull it from the back? And it just comes down, you know, the front. No, it doesn't. it's, you know, we're afraid that these are going to show through and, and this is going to show through. So we decided, it, she decided it needs to be in the back. Well, how are we going to get it in the back? Because it's got to yeah. be this thing. And so, her and her sleeves and all these different things. So there's a lot of things to think about. So she has, from the entire, the show starts, especially in the junior version, You, she has on that dress and she has the cape on underneath it and that's all snapped up to the top. And when you, when we would put on her coronation dress, I would tuck the, the cape the little cape on the back of her let it go dress up so it wouldn't fall and show. And then her um, sleeves would be pushed up just a smidge that they wouldn't show either. So the bodice of the dress, the coronation dress, was a breakaway zipper. So it wasn't one that, um, like on a pair of jeans, where they're automatically just connected. It's like a jacket zipper, a breakaway. It just comes right off. And then the skirt was all magnets. And so, and there were two little snap magnets on her sleeves. Um, So as she would walk up and she would sing and stand there in her spot, she would kind of undo the um, sleeve magnets. Never caught that. Which, you know, she would do things with her hands, you know, I'm going to set a flurry and do all these different things. So, and she was right behind or right up against a um, rain curtain. So me, looking like a ninja, um... I was dressed in all black. I had a hood. I had, you know, everything on and all black so that I blended in with yeah. the dark behind me. And I would come up once the rain curtain was down and I'd stand. I was on stage on the platform behind the rain curtain and I'd she'd back up just enough um, that I could reach her and I would unzip as she's singing, unzip and break away the bodice. I would undo the first two snaps and kind of shove her cape down. Uh-huh. And then I would hold on, depending on which else it was, because they had they decided to turn different the, directions. Right. Oh, I would hold on to one side, mm-hmm. and then as they turned, I pulled it, and the magnets just flowed away, and I would catch it through the rain curtain. And as she turned, it all just fell, oh, and there so she went, beautiful. and she had changed. Right. It was amazing. It got it like was. a cheer every time. <laughs> oh. Yeah. And I would just collect it in my hands and walk back down the escape stairs and go about my merry way. And so magnets and Velcro and all that stuff are magical. You had to do something kind of so ninja-y like that for, was it Cinderella? That's my other favorite one I've done. Okay. So I did Cinderella and um, she had on, and this was a different costumer that I've worked with because this was um, before Heather and it was, and she was a genius. She did the, um, she did the Cinderella uh Words are hard, guys. <laughs> Cinderella. <laughs> um, sure. <laughs> um, like her rag dress, like her peasant dress at the beginning. Yeah. Um, and then we had two of those. So we had one just a normal every day that she would wear at the beginning. And we added crinoline underneath it. So it would be a little bit poofy so that when we switched to the trick dress that had the um, dress underneath it, it would... You would tell be, You, you could right? tell a difference. Thank you. Yes. So, she, so this dress... Um, the trick dress, it was all down, it was all open down the middle. And it was kind it's kind of hard to explain. They um, kind of wove together. They almost looked like hair elastics that I would weave, that she sewed in all the way up, and I would weave them together so they looped in and out of each mm-hmm. other. And then there was a little button at the very top that the, the top one would loop on. And then they had magnets at the sleeves at the very top and around her arms the big poofy part and then she had a and then her apron snapped in the front so it had on everything in the back was solid and the bow was on there and then the apron in the front just snapped okay so that it would break away 
So I had to go down. Oh, and then she had her crown on and she had her kerchief over it so that she would just take the kerchief off and her crown would be there. Um, and then underneath was her ball gown. And we, I, they put little hook and eyes all the way around it. And I, we just used the hooks, not the eyes. And I would run a string and I would pull it up and I would tie it up so it would be up and it wouldn't because it was really long. So then she would do, you know, it's possible, and she'd sing all that stuff, and she'd stand there. I was down in the orchestra pit, and I came up through the trap door. <laughs> nice. Which is a hole in the stage. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so I sat on a platform to get me up high enough, and I had a headset because I was down there with the orchestra. So they put a headset down there so I could hear the cue line because I was with a live orchestra. And I, they had a fog machine that was there too because and the fog would, you know, shoot up. Did you have to control that too? I did not control the fog. Okay. Someone else controlled the fog. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, no. Okay. So there are these. So <laughs> I would. I, yeah, no, listen. I have two arms <laughs> and like I couldn't. And... <laughs> so I had to open up the trap door at a certain time, and let it hang there, and then she would take off her kerchief, and then she would undo the um, the little button part up here. And my hands came up, and I pulled on them twice, and it all just unraveled and came back down. And then mm. I'd put the, the trap door up, and she'd spin out through the fog, and there she was. Oh, that's amazing. Wow. wow. And it was, I think those two happen to be, like, my most mm. favorite that I've ever done. They're just, and I think it's because they're kids in the audience, and they're princesses, oh, yes. and the kids in the audience go, <gasps> Like, yeah. she, you know, yeah. oh my gosh, you know what I mean? And I can hear those, you know, being in the in the pit for the Cinderella one, it's hard to hear, but having the headset on, I could hear it through like the stage manager's headset and things like oh, that. Nice. So I could hear them clapping and cheering mm -hmm. and all the kids going, oh, and, um, and that kind so of thing, pure, because you know, it's just, so, um, yeah. And there's just like, yeah. it's magic. Oh my gosh. Same yep. with the Elsa one. Like those two, I think are my favorite that I've ever done. And I love just, all the theater magic stuff. When we I do to too. See it's that and be a part so of that. Cool. Yeah, it's the best. Mm -hmm. Is there any like theater magic piece that you haven't done yet that you've always kind of thought about you'd want to be involved oh, in? Jeez. I know, I just threw that at you right You now. did, I don't know. Oh, that's, that's a surprise question from it, Kathy. It's totally. I know. <laughs> Sometimes I go wrong. Jeez, it you never know. <laughs> um, <laughs> Think about it, marinate on it, and, and see, yeah, just think about that. I don't know. I'm trying to think. I mean, you've done, you've done a done lot. Of, I've done a lot, a lot of stuff. that I've been. I guess I've been very blessed to do a lot of theater magic, and you know, I've, I've most recently I've been to New York a lot yeah. <laughs> in the last year, and to see shows and always watch them. Going, how they do that? Right. How they do that? What about like in Harry Potter, right? There's a lot in there that I would love to do. Yeah, there you go. Well, and you see it differently once you've been backstage and worked it. Sometimes you have a hard time paying attention to the plot because you're like, oh, that was a quick change. Well, How and I did that? that. So I did that the first time that I watched Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. I knew there was going to be a lot of magic, um, and I want to know how it's done. <laughs> but obviously they can't tell me how it's done. Right. So I sit there and I go, I forget all about the plot that mm -hmm. I'm watching. Yeah. It's a good thing that I've seen it two other times, so then I can focus on the plot. But I... Because you're speculating. I'm like, like how did they do that? Yeah. How did they? They had to have done it with whatever they did it with. Like, it's, yeah, it's so Stripper cool. pants. Stripper pants. Okay. Stripper, Stripper pants. pants. Stripper pants. And, and yeah. So there's there's a bunch of magic-y fun things that I just am like. So I saw Frozen on Broadway um, with my friend Jordan and Steven. And, and we went, and I knew it was coming. I knew that, and I, they had, I think they had just done like the view or something, the let it go. So you saw the dress change happen. And I was like, oh my God. And so, and we were there, we went on the matinee and there were tons of kids there because they go on field trips in New York City. And it happened to be like World Theater Day, which made it even oh. better. And so we were surrounded by kids and we were up in the mezzanine, which is the second level. And I'm like, I hear the do, 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 do. And I went, oh, it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> and I sat between Stephen and Jordan, and if you ever go to a show with me, I'm very sorry. I hit when I'm excited. You leave with bruises on your legs. Finger so, marks. Finger marks. <laughs> you, it just happens. And so I'm smacking them going, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. And I get on the edge of my seat, and I know it's about to happen, and it happens. And I literally, I scream louder than the kids did. <laughs> I like literally, thank God we were in the last row of whatever section, we, the front mezzanine section. Because I literally threw myself back and was like, oh my God, that was so magical. <laughs> like, <laughs> I literally, 
Yeah, poor Stephen and Jordan had like bruises on their arm, on their legs because I was like, here it comes, here it comes, it's coming. I mean, just the first. Doo, 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 doo. Like Aww. it was so, it was so cool. It was really fun. And it totally lived up to all of your it did. expectations. That's awesome. And then I went backstage and they told me how it worked. Oh, <laughs> so, nice. Yeah. Nice. Which I will not tell you how it worked. Yeah. That one I will keep a secret. That's okay. yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. but yeah. Because don't they do it like down? Yes. Yeah. It that one goes like down. The floor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Kind but of like it's the Cinderella one. Kind of like the Cinderella, yeah. But it, it was, yeah. So that one was really fun. I felt like a kid in a candy store. Like I felt like I was one of those like... Excuse me, five-year-old little girls seeing their first show for the first time again. I was like, it's just so pretty. How did they do it? <laughs> yeah. It's just so cool. It's we just found so ourselves cool. doing that. We got to go see some Broadway shows last year and had one kid on one side and one side. We are just constantly hitting each other. <laughs> did you see that? Did you see that? I mean, everything. Nice. <laughs> and it's like when you're, when you're in it, like we are in it, you forget when you get to be an audience member. Mm-hmm how truly magical it really is. You know, you can get a little jaded and you can get a little whatever when you're backstage all the time. It's still so much fun and you still get lost in it, but it's there's just something about when it's like, oh, I don't have to do it myself. I get to sit and watch it. Like, yes. it's just... I it, appreciate it. Yes. Yeah, yeah appreciate you appreciate it because you know what goes into it. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. And you remember, oh, this is why I love live theater mm-hmm. and this is why it's it's magical in the way that it is because it doesn't happen like that anywhere else. You know, it's just the things that you can do in live theater just makes it magical. And the quick changes alone snaps. (laughs) Just (laughs) get me every time. Don't go we're, to a we're show. apprentices. We're still learning. Yes, we are. y'all are great. Yes. Are y'all right knocked here. it out of the park, and I love you. You're perfect. Listen, sorry, don't. you called me out. I went to New York. I'm so sorry. <laughs> not on your look, we know. episode. I did. Yeah, I went to New you York. You have to share the Lolo love. I do. <laughs> I mean, listen, I'm not gonna be around forever. Got to pass on the stuff. But no, yeah, no, no, well, you still have to teach them. To you still have to teach them how to like do that mapping out. Because yes. you made a chart. I did. And it had like QAF mm-hmm. and whatever <laughs> QAF. on there. I'll tell you what those stand for. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So in a, in a lot of shows, so not every show do you need to make a costume plot like that. Mm. Um, usually I make it if I'm a specific person's dresser. So when I did Mary Poppins, I was strictly Mary Poppins dresser. And so um, I did... All of I did a costume plot for her because rarely is Mary off the stage, right? And rarely does she have time to do anything. So it's not just to help me, you know, remember, because <laughs> just just like you know, in the other tech, in the community theater world, dressers only get four days. Just like you know, your your run crew, right, you're your deck crew. Ends. I'm coming mm-hmm. in. Sometimes I will go in before and watch, depending on the show, and watch a run. I've come in completely blind before. Like I closed one show on a Sunday. First dress for the next show was Monday, and I had never even watched anything. I and I had, and it wasn't even a show that I knew. Like it, I couldn't right. go in like like if it was a right. Shrek and I had done it before, or, <laughs> or a, you know, I've let it go frozen and I'd done it before. I didn't. I don't know the show, and I came in completely blind. Normally, I try to go in, a, you know, the week before and watch a run or whatever if I can. It doesn't always happen. Um, but anyways, so I try to map out, like, this is what you're wearing at this time, and then you're going to change and blah, 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 blah. But if it's a big show, like I Love You, You're Perfect was, yeah. where we only had six actors, and they barely, and every time they came off, they were wearing something different or changing yes. into something different. I do what I, you know. They're I'm, never the same character mm-hmm. from twice. scene to scene. No. I mean, not never, but it's pretty rare. It's pretty rare that they are playing the same character because it's all different vignettes. So I make what I call a costume plot. So our costumer, um, she starts it usually. So she writes down everything, you know, each um, actor. And then in each scene, she writes down who they are in that scene. And then she'll add in as she's building and as she's fitting and things like that she'll add in okay this person is wearing you know the brown pants with the whatever shirt with this hat whatever and then the next scene i know they're wearing this Mm -hmm. so during tech week i go through and i write down what side of the um stage they are exiting and what side of the stage they have to enter and if they um, because sometimes they like they like to exit stage left and have to enter stage right and you're like oh Okay. <laughs> they have to run around. The they have to run around and strip their pants down themselves. So, um, and they penguin to you. Exactly. They penguin to you. Yes. 
<laughs> and they literally look like penguin. And yeah. then I, t- you know, and I write down that they are coming from this, you know, they're taking off these things and they're adding these things. Um, and sometimes it's, it says QAF, which is quick as fuck. <laughs> That's usually my <laughs> my term there. Um, so sorry. Um, it so really, it, really, it really means really, really, really fast. <laughs> you do not have a lot of time and yeah. this is what we're doing and it's QAF, man. Um, and I make a little plot and I put it on either side and then we take that week um, and you can edit it, you can write on it, you can, you know, for especially for this one when I wrote it for you two mm-hmm. um, ladies, it... Um, I was like, you do what you write it how what works best for your brain. Here is your outline, and I because I wasn't going to be there opening week opening weekend opening weekend, so I stayed the entire week. I planned it out. I you know did all those things, and then I said, here it is. Write what you need to write. If you want to scratch something out, scratch it out. That's totally fine. Here is your blanket. Yeah, I would, but I would go home at night and I'd <laughs> look at my notes. And I'm like. Oh, gosh so I'd have to come back the next day Laura what does this mean what did I write here because I don't remember what this means and I just go uh it's a blue blazer it's a blue blazer and it's a whatever so costume plots really help yeah um because dressers also have tracks and you know we have a um just like actors do actors have a track they know that they are going to leave the dressing room at this particular line they're going to grab this particular prop on their way to stage left and they're going to enter in you know stage left and one well dressers do the same thing we know like um musicals are a lot easier for me to follow because i'm musical so i know that at this particular song Mm -hmm. at this particular time i need to be stage left getting these costumes ready and having this prop for this person and they're going to come out and i have this amount of time and they have to be back on stage by this time and sometimes that involves a wig as well and sometimes it does involve a wig i've done shows where i've had to do complete top to bottom, wig has to go, cl- the entire clothes, their shoes and their jewelry, everything has to go. Um, I did always Patsy Cline mm-hmm. and she oh, changed every time was she was out. Show. was a great show. Mm-hmm. She was an amazing actress and yeah. singer. Um, but she changed every time she left the stage. She was somebody else and you know, and you underdress so that helps too. You wear, explain what that means. Uh, mm-hmm, you <laughs> are fixing to, so if you, if we're, let's say you're wearing a long dress, Mm-hmm. Um, a long skirt and your next costume is say a shorter skirt or shorts or pants you go ahead and put those on underneath that skirt or dress for that scene um, that way when you come off stage all you have to do is take that dress off or take that whatever and you don't have to put those pants on yeah. they're already underneath you're underdressed um, it happens quite a bit um, you can do it with a shirt it saves a lot of time it does. PJ, um, your husband, he when he was in SpongeBob, he had some underdress moments. He did. So <laughs> him and Laura got a little close. We <laughs> did. <laughs> P, Dr. Paul and I got a little close during SpongeBob. Thank God, Kathy doesn't mind. No, um, it's but it's all for the theater. It is all for the theater. Yes, I had to. I had to. I have dressed both of your your yes. your actors and your family. Yeah. Gabby and <laughs> Dr. Paul. Um, so, yeah, he did. He had on, we would leave a base layer. Well, and, oh, and it took us a couple of times, too. I finally looked at him and went, why are we taking those pants off? We don't need to. <laughs> and he both and I went, shit, don't. <laughs> um, because he had some really quick ones, too. Uh-huh. And he would have to take his wig off because he had a fabulous wig yes, and spongebob that was fabulous he was feeling was himself like purple or something. Yeah. oh yeah it was like on magenta it was glorious <laughs> his whole costume is oh it was awesome. yeah. amazing yeah. it was amazing but we yeah. would take off the sport coat that he had on leave his and we would also it took us a couple times too i think it even took us all the way into like halfway through weekend one that we both went why are we taking that shirt off and we went, oh, I don't know. <laughs> um, it's just a mad scramble back there sometimes. It is. Yeah. But it's because, you know, you know, and he would throw, because he'd had to go in all blacks because he was doing a fun little black light number. But we would lift his pants up, you know, and chuck them in so that you couldn't see the rainbow. And we'd add shorts and um, he'd keep the same shoes. Um, and then we would take his, you know, we'd, he borrowed one of my sweatshirts and <laughs> we'd turn it inside yeah. out because it was black and put it on him and that kind of thing. So yeah, with the hood, with the hood up um, yeah. so that you couldn't see. But it all just depends on what, if you can underdress. Underdress if you can. It makes life easier. But sometimes there is no way that you can underdress. Yeah. There's absolutely no way. 
that you can underdress because the costume is either short or you're doing cabaret where it's nothing but lingerie and right. you know you yep can't you can't underdress under lingerie so not hiding anything in there <laughs> no you're not so um, it just depends but those yeah underdress if you're able to so sometimes you've got all these layers on mm-hmm. like you're. 80 pound dress. <laughs> yeah. That thing was layers. Right. Like just the dress alone. Yeah. It was. The I just skirt alone. unzipped it and got in. And like it, <laughs> it was standing on the floor and you just I mean, step over it, into it. It was beautiful, but it really Get was. Get help lifting it up and then zip. <laughs> so, yeah. You got us all on. You're running around. You're sweating mm-hmm. like crazy. How do you care for these costumes? Because you can't take them home and wash no. them every night. So some of them, like Kristen's 80 pound Beauty and the Beast dress, I can't wash. We cannot just stick in your washing machine. Yeah, that fabric um, wouldn't survive. It wouldn't survive. A wash. So some things, um, at the end of the run, those things we can take to a dry cleaner if we can, and we can take certain things too. Um, but if I can wash them, I'll take home the shirts, I'll take home the pants, I'll take home... All the whatever. elf stockings when you did, all when we did yes, elf? Yes, I did. Oh. So all the... So yeah, when we did elf... socks because yes. they get... They get nasty. Oh, man, yeah. Especially if you're oh doing a kid's show. I'm oh, man. Gabby out. Yeah, she got some... Stuff. I am calling Ooh. Gabby she out. She stank feet. <laughs> not Throw so those not shoes away. Feet. Oh, it was bad. It was bad. <laughs> and handing those to, to our friend, and he yes. just looked at me like really i'm like yes i gotta hand those you can't i asked you to quit changer you couldn't do it so you're gonna have to hold the shoes so sorry friend oh listen my first experience with her nasty feet (laughs) as a mom right so she's seven and you're like oh what little kid little girl seven has like you know we call them vinegar feet in our house oh Oh, well yes there are some friends that have vapor feet oh so we're driving back and forth to the theater because you know things are crazy that you know whatever and so she would leave her shoes or i'd pick her up at the end of um, theater and she ta- the first thing you do is take her little shoes off and so you know days of being like what is that smell <laughs> I don't know what that is so I'm thinking maybe somebody left something in the back car or somebody you know <laughs> life is crazy so you're going through drive-throughs <laughs> Lord knows what yeah. the hell you're eating that yeah. week you know ain't that the truth yeah and so stray like, nugget oh, back there yeah <laughs> Lord oh. only knows I'm like we got to clean out this car so we had a minute or whatever so I'm cleaning out the car I'm like, no, nothing smells back here. This is so strange to me. So then, I don't know, the next day, I think we were well into the show, mm-hmm. and um, I picked up one of her little shoes, <laughs> her little black Mary like Jane's. Mary Jane shoes, mm-hmm. and I, I was like, that is offensive. <laughs> <laughs> it felt so bad. That's at, a- because she, she comes out of these shoes when she wears a long pajama. Yeah, she like, went off gown. She, Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, I, that I'm surprised it didn't stink up the entire side. I was like, Gabby, what is going on? So we started putting dryer sheets in her shoes and I do it to this day because Does it help. Yeah. It helps oh, immensely. That's, true. that's good. Mm-hmm. Dryer sheet in the shoe. Yeah. Or, if your kid does theater, please, please take that tip yes. and do it because man, that's take it from out. a dresser. Because yeah. Thank God she's cute because I'll tell you what, I'm sure and yeah. I'm going to tell you what, the girls' dressing room is always oh, worse than the boys. I, that's surprising oh, yeah. to me, yes, but yes. yeah. Oh, no, it You is. walk in there and you're like, oh Ooh. gosh, why does it smell like feet in here? Because there's yeah. 30 feet. girls in there with and feet. Like, it's literally like uh, you can visibly see it. Like you walk through, yeah. you open like up that door haze. and it's like a block. I like just you just, <laughs> I'll scream, somebody needs deodorant in here. <laughs> just walk out. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, and I think because we're at that age where it's like, mm-hmm. do you need yes. it? Do you not? If, mm-hmm. if you question it, you always need it. Yes. Yeah. Just, always. <laughs> just do it. Yeah. <laughs> always. Reapply, reapply, reapply. Now, would yeah. Faboos, explain what Faboos so is. Was, and would that work in shoes? Um, oh, what's Faboos? It might. <laughs> so Faboos, <laughs> it's my other favorite thing to use. So if we cannot get to, so usually um, uh, in community theater anyways, Broadway's different um, and regional and things are different, but community theater, we aren't able to wash clothes after every performance. Usually if I am doing um, costumes or costume laundry, I come, like we we finish on a Sunday, we have four days off, I'll come in like Tuesday or Wednesday, grab all the laundry and do it. But in between shows, you still need to somehow preserve them so they're not stinky, you know, because actors sweat and it's hot under those lights and they're dancing or whatever. So we use Faboos, which is this, it's straight up vodka. It is literally (laughs) vodka that we spray on them 
And it's because vodka the alcohol. Cuts it does. The so bacteria. you do mm. it. Mm. It the the um, alcohol in, in vodka because it is it, you spray it on where you need it to. And when it dries, it absorbs the bacteria and the smell and it dries clear and it dries because vodka has no smell. So we call it Febuz and like Febreze, but That's we, and it works yeah. miracles. So we go in and I was just there this week with Heather and she was Febuzing. So um, <laughs> she was. And you do, you spray it. Normally you spray it, you know, under the arms and around the neck if it's a guy and, you know, he has a collared shirt. And sometimes yeah. I just spray the whole shirt. Yeah. Just depends. And you let it in uh, the weekend sometimes. Doesn't always work. <laughs> but 95% of the time it does work. And the, until you can are able to actually take them and wash them. That's interesting. Is and there a particular like that. brand that works better than others? <laughs> nope. I'd buy Top the cheapest shelf. you can. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just go buy the cheapest oh, and you pour God. it in. In Matilda, we all broke the rules because they we had did. those tube socks yes. that they wore that smelled oh, atrocious. Mm-hmm. And Nachos. we would sneak them home and wash them. And I wasn't them there back. during those and I would have been like, take them. Oh, they were, they were walking so around no, we, we weren't sure if we were disgusting. supposed to, but it was like seriously I bad. I would have jungle rod or something. I would have said, yeah, take them. And it was more than one weekend. So we're like, yeah, it was three weekends. That was three weekends. Yeah. But sometimes, you know, um, and some actors do, um, take their shirts home. Um, and I'll remind them, you know, I'm going to do laundry, but if you feel like you want to totally, that's fine. Mm -hmm. That, you know, just please make sure that you make, get it back. And because I've had friends, actors do that and they're like, crap, I left my shirt at home. Well, you need to go back and get yeah, it. Yeah, that's right. Because how much time do you have? How much time do you have? Yeah, you've got to do it. Um, but yeah, so Faboos is great in between shows. And then, um, well, and and in Elf, our, we actually did take um, our buddy's costume and dry clean it every time because it's fleece. Yeah. And the poor guy so wore that fleece all the time mm-hmm. and, gosh, and he's hardly off the stage and, and they're hardly off the stage so mm-hmm. so one thing i want parents to hear mm-hmm. because this is very important yes what should a child never do when they get their costume for the first time don't Ooh. complain <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's a good one you get what you get and you don't pitch a fit just like the director has a vision of what their show looks like mm-hmm. the costumer has a vision of what her costumes look like she has he or she has sat down with the director and they have talked about it you know costumers are creatives Mm -hmm. they you know some of these costumers are designing them themselves like they're drawing them they're doing this they're doing that um not every show is a pool show meaning that you're not just going to the warehouse and pulling costume pieces Mm -hmm. A lot of times the costumer has to actually physically design what these look like and then produce them. So they have a strict vision. Yeah. Um, and mine, and this is what your character is, and the, you got to remember that you're not playing yourself. So it's not what Laura would wear as Laura. It's what Laura would wear as, you know, tree number four. So it is, you know, all those different things. So don't complain. You just say, thank you. And you take it and you wear it. Mm-hmm. Um, don't, I wouldn't eat in them. No, definitely don't eat. <laughs> don't yeah, drink, no you know, you can drink water, you can drink, you know, those type of things. You've got plenty of time beforehand, usually in a community theater setting to, um, you know, eat before you get there. Water yeah. is great. Yeah. So, yeah. Those are my two big things. Don't complain. Don't complain. <laughs> <laughs> and don't eat in your costume. Because I, Lola will catch you. Oh, yeah. We will, too. And I have. Ask Pinky. Yes. <laughs> Pinky does. I caught Pinky one time yeah. and well, made her wear something. Your, I think yeah. it was we during have Matilda. to wrap up for today. Yeah. I'm kind of glad because we still have lots of things uh, to talk about. Oh, yeah. We can talk a talker. A talker. And full of information. So thank you so much yeah, for Yeah, you're welcome. Today. Yeah, thanks for coming. We can't wait to have Anytime. you back. Uh-huh. Thanks. Yeah. This All was right. fun. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Well, thanks for listening, and uh, we'll see y'all next time.